If you're looking for the best laptop as a graphic designer in 2020, then you're in the right place. This is my lineup from budget all the way to high end coming at you right now. If you're new to the channel, my name is Benji Kaiser. This is where you're gonna find the best tech and tools for graphic designers and creative professionals. So if that sounds like your kind of place, consider subscribing and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. Also, if you're curious about the exact specs and pricing of any of these models as we're going through the video, you can head down into the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do make a purchase through that link, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But that's to keep this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, if you're also curious about the best budget laptops, like a whole lineup of budget laptops or maybe color accuracy or battery life or even the ultimate guide for choosing a graphic design laptop you can head on over to my channel or click in the YouTube cards above or the description below to find some other videos that'll help you out as we're going through the video if you want to jump to specific spots in the video like maybe budget mid-range high-end or all the spec jargon you can head down in the description and I put some timestamps there to help you jump ahead and get there faster now another thing that was really helpful in curating this 2020 list of graphic design laptops was how much feedback I got in the 2019 version of this video so if you have comments questions suggestions whatever it might be head down into the comment section and let me know I love to interact in the comment section and I'll be there to answer your questions and take your feedback all right now the first section we're gonna look at is the budget laptops these are gonna be great for students going into the graphic design industry maybe going into school or becoming a self-taught designer or maybe for a professional who's been in the industry a while but needs a nice on-the-go laptop to complement their big power workstation or their desktop computer whatever it might be they just need something lightweight for on the go we're going to start out with the Acer Swift 5. The Acer Swift 5 comes with the Intel 8th Gen i5-8265U, 8 gigs of RAM, integrated graphics from Intel, the Intel UHD Graphics 620, 256 gigs of solid state hard drive, and a color accuracy reaching 95% of sRGB and 62% of Adobe RGB. The next one on the list is the Lenovo Flex 5. It comes with the Intel 8th Gen i5-8250U processor, 8 gigs of RAM, Integrated graphics from Intel, the HD Graphics 620, 256 gigs of solid state hard drive, and it has 57% of sRGB color gamut range and 37% of Adobe RGB color gamut range. So not as high on the color gamut range, but still a good buy as far as performance is concerned. The Dell Inspiron 15 comes with the AMD Risen 7 2700U, 16 gigs of RAM. So this laptop's gonna have the most RAM in the budget category. The AMD Radeon Vega 10, 512 gigs of solid state hard drive. It's gonna reach 55% sRGB color gamut and 35% Adobe RGB color gamut. The last laptop in the budget category is the Asus VivoBook S15. This one comes with the Intel 8th Gen i5-8265U processor, 8 gigs of RAM, the Intel integrated graphics card, the Graphics 620, 512 gigs of solid state hard drive, and has a color accuracy of 57% sRGB and 36% Adobe RGB. Now, a quick side note before we move into the mid-range category, if you're curious about why I'm choosing these specific laptops, you know, why 8 gigs or 16 gigs of RAM, you know, what processor is good, um, how much storage should I have, what about the GPU, do I need a GPU for Photoshop, does that matter? Hang on to the end of this video and I'm going to walk through all of that. I just want to get you the laptops up front so you know what laptops I'm recommending right off the get-go. All right, let's jump back into the laptops with the mid-range. The first one in the mid-range category is the Lenovo Legion Y540. This one comes with the Intel 9th Gen i7-9750H processor. Now that's important, hang on to the end to understand why that H is important at the end of that processor. It has 16 gigs of RAM, the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650, graphics processing unit, 512 gigs of solid state hard drive, and it has a color accuracy reaching 91% sRGB color gamut range and 59% of Adobe RGB. The MSI Modern 15 comes with the Intel 10th Gen i7-10510U processor, 16 gigs of RAM, the NVIDIA GeForce MX250, 512 gigs of solid state hard drive, and this one reaches 100% of the sRGB color gamut range and 74% of the Adobe RGB color gamut range. So we're starting to see as we get into some more, you know, more expensive models, uh, just gonna be frank with you, you're gonna see those color accuracies start to increase. That's one way that they really get the budget laptops down in price is they just don't have as high quality screens and color accuracy. So you'll see that start to improve as we move up the line. All right, the next laptop is the Acer Concept D3 and the D3 Pro. This is currently 
one of my favorite laptops on the market. I am a huge fanboy of this laptop. Uh, I think Acer's doing a great job packing a lot of power, packing great color accuracy into a really decently priced laptop. The Acer Concept D3 comes with the Intel 9th Gen i7-9750H processor, 16 gigs of RAM, the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 Studio Edition, 512 gigs of solid state hard drive, and has a 100% color accuracy on sRGB, Adobe RGB, and DCI P3. So it's a really fantastic laptop. There's actually three versions. You get an i5, which is a really nice budget. You can get the medium, which is like an i7 with the GTX 1650 graphics processing unit, and you can get the Quadro 1000 in the pro version of the laptop. So there's just a lot of diversity in that laptop. I will move on, I'm not gonna fangirl too much. All right, the next laptop is the HP Spectre X360. This laptop comes with the Intel 9th Gen i7-9750H processor, 16 gigs of RAM, the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 graphics processing unit, 512 gigs of solid state hard drive, and has a color accuracy of 93% sRGB and 61% Adobe RGB. All right, now we're moving into the high-end laptop category for graphic designers. The first model is the Dell XPS 15. This is actually my daily laptop that I use for graphic design and video editing. I like it a lot. It's been very reliable for me. The Dell XPS 15 comes with the Intel 9th Gen i7-9750H processor, 16 gigs of RAM, the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 graphics processing unit, 256 gigs of solid state hard drive, and has a color accuracy of 100% sRGB, 100% Adobe RGB, and 100% DCI P3. So that's really color accurate, great performance, it's a good buy. Next is the MacBook Pro 16. I'm a huge fan of the MacBook Pro as well. They make a great build and they've really made a comeback this year. Uh, in videos I've made in the past, and even in the 2019 version of this video, I was not really impressed with the MacBook Pro. However, bringing back that scissor switch, making some improvements in the cooling system, I'm confident in recommending this laptop now in 2020. The MacBook Pro 16 that I'm talking about here has the Intel 9th Gen i7-9750H processor, 16 gigs of RAM, the AMD Radeon Pro 5300M, for the graphics processing unit, 512 gigs of solid state hard drive, and it hits 100% color accuracy on sRGB, Adobe RGB, and DCI-P3. The Gigabyte Aero 15, this laptop is great for graphic design, and if you're gonna be somebody doing multimedia designs, you're getting into video editing, motion design. Let's say you work a lot with like social media graphics and you're doing editing videos for social posts. This is a really killer laptop for that. I'm gonna tell you why here in just a second. But first, it comes with the Intel 9th Gen i7-9750H processor, 16 gigs of RAM, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 Studio Edition, 512 gigs of solid state hard drive, and has a 100% color accuracy across the board, sRGB, Adobe RGB, and DCI P3. Now, three things I'm gonna highlight about this Gigabyte Aero 15. It is Pantone certified, so every laptop that comes out of the factory is Pantone certified for color accuracy and color gamut range. It has the Studio, you say I mentioned the Studio GPU, which is optimized for creative professionals. So it's optimized for Premiere Pro, it's optimized for After Effects, it's optimized for DaVinci Resolve. It's very helpful. And lastly, they've partnered with Microsoft Azure. And if you approve for them to send your data to Microsoft Azure, they'll send the data up into the cloud, they'll analyze the data according to what programs you're using, and then they'll send that data back to your computer, and that data will then optimize your laptop for say, Premiere Pro, Photoshop and InDesign, if those are the three programs you're running, and it'll make sure that all the components work together to create a better performing laptop for you. Really cool features in the Gigabyte Aero. All right, the next laptop we're looking at is the Asus ZenBook Pro Duo. This to me is like the ultimate workflow laptop. It's got two screens. It's got a screen up top and a screen along the keyboard deck with the trackpad on the right side of the keyboard. Kind of odd, I know, but after using this laptop for a little while, I really got used to it because I was able to rest my hand on the right side of the keyboard you know, do my mouse and trackpad, and then it left my hand free for all the shortcuts and commands. So really neat. And this laptop comes with the Intel 9th Gen i7-9750H processor, 16 gigs of RAM, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 Studio Edition, 512 gigs of solid state hard drive, and they're ranking this laptop for a color accuracy of 100% DCI P3. All right, we're moving on to Razer, the Razer Blade 15 and the Razer Blade Studio Edition. Now I'm talking about both of these because the Razer Blade 15 is substantially more affordable than the Razer Blade Studio Edition. The Razer Blade Studio Edition is really, I would say the laptop that I'm most encouraging video editors to go after. 
but the Razorblade 15 doesn't have the color accuracy that you're gonna find in the Razorblade Studio Edition. So that's why I put these two laptops on here to tell you that yes, the Razorblade 15, the standard edition is powerful. It has the 9th gen i7 9750H processor, 16 gigs of RAM, the RTX 2060 graphics processing unit, 512 gigs of solid state hard drive, but it has an sRGB of 91% and an Adobe RGB of 59%. Whereas with the Studio Edition, you have the processor, you have 32 gigs of RAM, you have a Quadro RTX 5000, which is fantastic for video editing, 512 gigs of solid state hard drive, and then you have the DCI P3 color accuracy of 100%. So that's why it's a toss up for what you need as a designer. If you're a graphic designer that's gonna be getting into video editing, then that Studio Edition could be a good buy for you. All right, so that's the full lineup of graphic design laptops from budget all the way up to high end. Now let's talk about why I chose the specific laptops and the specs you need for a graphic design laptop so you understand why I'm recommending these laptops. I don't want you to just come into this video, say, oh, Ben said that's a good laptop, I'm just gonna buy it, and not understand, say, maybe that laptop starts to slow down as you scale your business and you start to get into video editing or you start to get into motion design. You're like, okay, Ben said this is a good laptop, why is it slowing down all of a sudden? What do I need to do to make it faster? That's this section of the video. So if you wanna know more in depth, hang on right now, we're gonna dive in. And the first thing we're gonna talk about is the processor. So you notice those budget laptops, a lot of them had the U processor. Now the U processor is a mobile processor. I'm gonna use a comparison between, let's say the 10th gen i7 10510U versus the i7, let's say 9750H processor. Now, when you look at those two processors, you say, oh, well that new, 10th gen processor, won't that be faster than the older 9th gen processor? Well, you gotta pay attention to that final letter, and that's the U. It is a mobile processor, and it's really optimized for business professionals. It's optimized for streaming. It's optimized for students who are going into class and taking notes, but that does not mean it's not capable of graphic design whatsoever. It is very capable of graphic design. It can boost up to some of the same levels that the H processors can get up to, but don't be fooled just because it says 10th gen i7 that it's gonna be faster than the 9th gen i7 because it's the H versus the U. The H processors are made for more professional workstations. They're made for gaming laptops and gaming computers. And so they're gonna have more power and they're gonna be able to sit at a higher level of power more consistently without overheating your laptop or really wearing on the performance of your machine. So pay attention to the U versus the H when you're buying a laptop. That's a big difference in the processor because you could actually have an i5 that ends up being faster than an i7. If you have like an i5 with an H processor versus an i7 with a mobile U processor. If you wanna get more into depth with that, you can comment below and say, hey Ben, make a full video on that. I'm really curious about that and I would love to do that for y'all. All right, next we're gonna talk about the RAM. So the RAM memory, how that works is each time you open up an application on your computer, let's say Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator, or even Google Chrome, you know, you're browsing the web, it's gonna pull away from your RAM memory. So every time you open, say Chrome, to browse the web, you're gonna use anywhere from two to five gigs of RAM, depending on how much you're using the internet. You open up Photoshop, you can use anywhere from three to six gigs of RAM. All right, so you add those two together and you're already, well, basically you're eight gigs of RAM. So that's why I recommend people getting 16 gigs of RAM if you wanna run multiple design programs at the same time and be browsing the internet and listening to Spotify. Every time you open an application on your computer, you're gonna pull away from that RAM memory. That's why when you see video editors, they recommend usually about 32 gigs of RAM. And if they're editing like big 6K projects within the RED software, they're gonna even encourage 64 gigs of RAM because it just takes so much power, takes so much of that RAM memory to run that program. So if you're getting an eight gig laptop, eight gigs of RAM, I recommend running one program at a time, you know, running Photoshop or running Illustrator. That way you can get the most performance out of that laptop. As soon as you start opening multiple programs, it's gonna slow down and you might become frustrated. Or buy one of those laptops with the eight gigs of RAM and as your budget grows, Swap out that eight gigs of RAM for 16 gigs of RAM. All right, graphics processing units. I hear a lot of people asking the question, okay, I'm gonna be in Photoshop, I'm gonna be working in graphics, I'm gonna be an Illustrator, do I need a GPU? What GPU is good for Photoshop or Illustrator? It doesn't matter. The integrated graphics is enough. The reason you wanna get a dedicated graphics card like an NVIDIA GTX graphics card or an AMD Radeon Pro in the MacBook Pro is for video editing. 
When you're working inside of Photoshop or InDesign or Illustrator, you're relying heavily on your CPU. The GPU only comes in when you're rendering video or when the CPU gets overloaded, say in Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve, the GPU will then come in and support the CPU alongside of it to help it run faster. It's also the video card which runs multiple screens. So if you're running multiple screens on your laptop and you're editing 4K, 6K footage, then you're gonna need a bigger graphics processing unit to make sure your computer keeps up and does not start to get laggy in the timeline of Premiere Pro. So think GPU, graphics processing unit, it really should be called like a VPU for goodness sakes because it's really, really well built for video. Um, but you know, gamers use it a lot, so it's, it's been given that graphics processing unit name. So no, you do not need a GPU if you're in the basic Photoshop, InDesign, or Illustrator programs. It's only when you're getting into video editing that that really matters. All right, next up on the list is storage. The only reason storage affects performance is the hard disk drive, the HDD, versus the solid state hard drive. All right, let's talk about solid state hard drive versus hard disk drive. The solid state hard drive is basically like a big thumb drive. It has no moving parts, whereas the hard disk drive has moving parts, and that's how it reads and writes, saves, loads, etc. So because there's no moving parts inside of the solid state hard drive, they're gonna be substantially faster and more reliable. The hard disk drives read and write a lot slower. So if you have a hard disk drive in your computer, the reason it's affecting the performance is because it's spinning. It's not the size of the hard drive. Now, when you get a hard disk drive, you're gonna see different RPM rates. So some are like 5,400 RPM, some are 7,200 RPMs. That just means it can spin faster, which then allows you to save, read, write, all that faster. But I recommend avoiding the hard disk drive, going to solid state, they become so affordable in this day and age, and they perform much faster. I use the example of trying to look up information for how fast they can read and write. So hard disk drive would be the equivalent of me wanting to know what the word optimism means. So I get up off the couch, I go to my bookshelf, I pull out a thesaurus and I look and I find the word optimism. It's me physically going and getting that and looking for it. Whereas the solid state hard drive is more the equivalent of me saying, okay, what's the word optimism mean? Pick up my phone, type optimism definition, and there it is. I didn't have to physically get up and go and find it it just points straight to that piece of information on the hard drive. It's basically a quick way to kind of explain it and understand it. All right, now for color accuracy, sRGB versus Adobe RGB versus DCI-P3. What do all these categories mean and what is color gamut? So color gamut is the amount of color that your screen can produce and the level of accuracy in which it produces it. So first and foremost though, let's get this out of the way. RGB and CMYK are two different color spaces. So you will not see 100% accuracy when what is on your screen to when you go to print. So if there's any print designers in the house looking at this video, know that you cannot 100% reproduce the color that you see on your screen into the printed piece. It's because it's two different color spaces. RGB, which is red, green, blue, versus the CMYK. So the CMYK is a different color space. It's using four colors to make up the print rather than the three colors that the screens create. So if you wanna make sure your colors are color accurate, I recommend getting a Pantone swatch book, using the Pantone swatch, and then going to print. We recently did this with a booth design that we were working on for the company that I work with. All right, now for the different color gamut ranges. DCI-P3 is considered one of the more vast color gamut ranges. It's gonna cover more of the color gamut range. You're gonna be able to see more colors. However, it does lean a little bit more to the yellows and the reds, and Adobe RGB leans more to the blues and the greens. So depending on the colors you want to see projected in your laptop, that will encourage you to lean more towards DCI-P3 range versus Adobe RGB range. Adobe RGB has pretty much been the historically acclaimed color gamut range that people really strive after. Um, so DCI-P3 and Adobe RGB are really the numbers you wanna look at when choosing a laptop if you're looking for optimal color accuracy. sRGB is pretty good, it's not amazing. So if you have a laptop that reaches 100% sRGB, but only only, you know, maybe say 75% Adobe RGB. If you're really looking for color accuracy, I would encourage you to look farther for a laptop that has 100% Adobe RGB or DCI P3. If you want me to go more in depth than that, you can definitely head down in the description below, make a comment, and I'd love to chat about that, make a video, whatever you need, so I can help you guys out. All right, that was a long video. Thank you so much for hanging in there. Subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. You can definitely head down in the description below. Check out those computers I recommended. Again, if you do make a purchase through one of those links, I will get a commission, which just is a huge thanks from me to you on this channel because it keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. I'm Benji Kaiser of BenjiKaiser.com and I'll see you here on the next video.